an entitled angry mother storms out of our store, leaving her child behind in the process, all because she was upset over some eggs that she dropped. She eventually realized she left her kid at our store almost three and a half hours later. Here's what happened. So while you work retail, you interact with a bunch of different kinds of people, and it really gives you a good view of the world around you. One of the kinds of people who came into my store regularly were the mentally handicapped. Now, there were quite a few who were regulars, and we got to know them really well. One was a girl by the name of Kay. That is not her real name. Now, she took a liking to me because one of the first times that she came in, she was wearing an anime t-shirt. Now, the way I worked was if I saw someone who had a t-shirt on or something that I might even have remote knowledge of, I would try to talk to them about it. It showed I actually cared about them as a person, which in turn kept them coming back to me. Now, she was a sweetheart who was always shy and nervous around people, but would light up the moment you talked to her. Her mother, on the other hand, was the definition of entitled. She would expect to get last week's sales days after they ended. She wanted free, reusable bags that cost $2 and always had a list of weird directions that changed every time she came in. And this incident was no different. So on this day, she came through my line as Kay had seen me. I talked to Kay for a minute while packing the groceries when her mom shouted a bunch of directions at me, all but one of which are unimportant to the story, but they were super specific things like don't put the steak with the ground beef and don't put the soup with the canned vegetables. Sure, it's kind of weird, but I don't get paid to care about this kind of stuff. So I just did whatever she said. The last instruction was the biggest one. She wanted me to put the eggs between the part of the cart where you would put a child and the handlebars. Now, I know this space is too wide on our carts, but when I tried to tell her that, I was responded by saying, you're here to entertain my kids and to do what I say. So I just thought to myself, whatever, it's not my fault if this goes wrong. I finish up her order and continue to talk to Kay as the entitled mother pays for her stuff and then leaves. Not even 45 seconds later, I hear the sound of a carton of eggs hit the ground and I see the entitled mother come storming up to me. She looks at me and says, my eggs fell because you didn't put them in correctly. But I told her that I put them in in the way that she instructed me to. No, had you listened to me, they wouldn't have fell. Even though I tried to explain that I checked in with her after I did it just to make sure this is what she wanted, she just said matter-of-factly that she's telling me I did it wrong and that apparently at a different store they never get this wrong. At this point, Kay is getting visibly upset and I'm about done with this mom, so I go to make sure that Kay's okay. I go to her and I say, are you okay? But Kay just kept repeating, don't be mad, over and over again. And to this day, that kind of breaks my heart. The entitled mother then looks at me and says, don't bother with her, she'll be fine, now go get my eggs. I told her that we sent another bagger to get some eggs the moment we heard yours fall and that they should be here any second. This entitled mother then asked for a manager. Little did me or the entitled mother know was that a manager was already being called by the cashier as I continued to calm down Kay, ensuring her that I wasn't mad. Now comes the part that really upsets me. My manager gets here, and even though I only had one store manager I ever liked, most of them knew that I did a good job. This lady proceeds to go off about how I'm a terrible employee and that I spent more time talking to her stupid daughter than doing my job correctly. Now, mock me all you want. I'm cool with it. Better people have called me worse things. But to have that level of disrespect to your own child boils my blood. And both my manager and cashier see me getting upset and they know why. The cashier then said, you told him to put your eggs like that and then put the eggs back in the cart in the same precarious position that I put him in based on this lady's request. But it was right about then that the entitled mother tried to backpedal. She said, well, he didn't warn me it was going to go wrong. But the cashier next to our register said, yes, he did. He is not a quiet guy and I absolutely heard him warn you. This goes back and forth for a good five minutes and the whole time Kay is freaking out as I'm trying to calm her down and her mother is so in her own head that she doesn't even have the least bit of concern for her own child. The other bagger gets back somewhere in the middle of them all arguing with the eggs and I've just completely checked out of the argument as I'm more concerned with Kay. But I see this entitled mother grab the eggs and walk out the store and this is all while I'm sitting next to Kay. I look at the manager and I say, um, what are we supposed to do now? The manager then realizes that I'm still sitting with the entitled mother's daughter. I told him that I've never dealt with anything like this before. The manager then questions if she left the parking lot already, and I told him that she has. The manager then says to take her to the conference room and sit with her until the mom gets back. Now, I had two hours until I was supposed to go home, and the conference room had water, so we went and sat in the back. It took three and a half hours for this lady to realize that she left her kid at our store, and because of that, I got about three and a half hours off my feet and a nice amount of overtime. Every time after that,
that, when they came in, Kay always asked if I was mad at her, and I always had to tell her no. And after that, her mom never gave me instructions again, and in fact, she could never even look me in the eyes ever again. What a terrible mother. Like, seriously, what a complete moron. I mean, how can you possibly act like that and then leave your kid at the store for three and a half hours? Like, that is seriously messed up. The fact that she would so willingly forget her daughter at the store and storm out of the store in the first place just shows how bad of a parent she is. Her priorities are clearly all wrong, and hopefully this experience makes her a better mother, but considering everything that was discussed, I seriously don't have my hopes up. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. My boyfriend constantly falls asleep whenever we have plans, and it's making me think that he's hiding something, and I seriously don't know what to do. So this is the fourth time that this has happened to me in four weeks, and at this point, I definitely feel like something is up. We usually see each other once a week, sometimes a little bit more. He lives about 40 minutes away from me, and he does have a pretty physical and demanding job, so I try to be as reasonable as possible that when he's off, he's going to want to relax. But this has just become a pattern. By the way, every time this has happened, it happened on his day off from work. The first time, it was on a Monday, and he was off work. I was working, and I got home at about 6.30 p.m. He was supposed to let me know if we were going to hang out that day or the day afterwards. We had been texting in the morning, and then he suddenly disappeared around noon, and then I didn't hear from him until about 8.30 at night, and I only found this out because he called me after I called him like a hundred times, telling me that he was sleeping. He texted me at 6 o'clock in the morning the next morning, saying he slept until 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, the second time, we actually ended up meeting up after this happened, but he was an hour and a half late. We made plans for dinner at 7 o'clock p.m., and I texted him that I just got off work, and when I arrived at the restaurant, I didn't get a response until 7.15 in the evening, with him saying that he fell asleep because he didn't sleep well the night before. He did rush getting to me, but he was incredibly late. Another time, we were supposed to meet for brunch at around noon, and I didn't end up hearing from him until 7.30 at night. He told me he couldn't fall asleep until 9 in the morning, and that's why he slept in that late. Another time this happened is when we actually spent time together three days ago, and he told me that we'll be going out again yesterday. I was working until 6.30 at night, and I asked him in the morning if we're still going to hang out, but I didn't hear from him until 4 o'clock in the evening, and his response was to say, what's the plan if we do meet up? Honestly, I was so annoyed with that response. I literally responded back to him in 30 minutes, saying that we can go grab dinner somewhere. I then didn't even hear back from him until 11 o'clock at night, saying that he fell asleep again. He told me that he slept well last night, so it makes me feel like he's lying in some kind of way. I'm not sure if he has some medical issues or not, and to my knowledge, he simply doesn't have any kind of problems. I'm also pretty confident that he doesn't do any illegal substances or drinks alcohol or something like that. He is very disciplined with his work and will go to sleep on time for the most part. We've been dating for nine months, and this has never been an issue in the past, so I'm so confused at this point as to what's going on. I know him, so he's going to try and make me feel bad if I bring it up. And after it happened the third time, I brought it up, and he made me feel bad by bringing up his job and how demanding it is, and was preaching to me how important sleep is. I also have the feeling that he only says that he'll see me again, because he knows I'll be upset if he doesn't. But his behavior is more upsetting than anything else. I don't know what to do, and I feel like he's definitely hiding something from me. I just need to figure out how to approach this situation in a way where he understands my point of view and doesn't get defensive. But then again, I think to myself, what's the point? Because he is probably going to continue to do this anyways. The best thing for me might be just breaking up with him. What should I do? Your boyfriend is being incredibly lazy and very disrespectful to you. Think about it for a second. He has every tool available to him that anyone else would have that would help him wake up on time and meet up with you when he says he's going to do it. But instead of doing that, he's just making excuses. And that's exactly what this is. Him trying to justify his tardiness and the fact that he's several hours late even replying to you sometimes is in fact just one big excuse in my opinion. If he really wanted to be with you, he would make the time and make it happen. And right now, he is absolutely showing his true colors. My girlfriend is claiming that I was not there for her after she got denied a raise at work. And now, as a result, she has decided to break up with me on the spot. And I seriously don't know what to do. So my girlfriend and I had been dating for over a month. Last week, my girlfriend requested a raise from her director because she's been working really hard and picking up people's slack when they're on vacation. One of her co-workers mentioned to her that no one has ever gotten a raise by just asking, and it only happens during the fourth quarter of the year. But she knew that the possibility
really was slim, however. I was still really proud of her for taking that leap of faith and just trying. Yesterday, when she found out that she was denied a raise, the director told her that it had to do with her temper and the questionnaires and a bunch of other things. And because of that, they were not going to move forward and give her a raise. Now, when she told me that, I told her that I'm really sorry to hear that. And I told her that I'm really proud of her even trying to get this done. I also said that you shouldn't take that critical feedback as a bad thing. It's there to help you grow in your professional career. Whenever I get critical feedback, I take it as a learning experience and how I can be better in the future. Four hours later and I still don't have any response. I even tried to call her once I got off work, but she still didn't pick up. 45 minutes later, she called me and I missed the call. So I sent her a text message back, basically saying that I'm getting something done right now, but I will call her back later. 30 minutes later, she replied by saying, don't bother. You know what's funny? The day I needed you the most is when you are nowhere to be found, but other people are. Isn't that funny? And you call yourself my boyfriend? Consider this the last text message. It's over. Take care now. Once my business was done, I called her immediately and I apologized for missing her call, but she's still implying I wasn't there for her when she needed me the most. I did address the issue about her rejection about the raise and how she tried to get it done, but she didn't care for what I had to say because I just simply wasn't there for her. Then things got heated and I told her that she was being childish for handling the situation the way that she did and how she was venting her emotions on social media while also posting about this on Instagram. I keep getting the feeling that how she handled the situation was immature, it was reactive and it could have been handled a lot differently, like an adult if anything. I also expected more from her because we did talk about how to resolve arguments in the past and how we need to communicate with each other in times like this. I mean, she ignored my text message and my call when I was trying to reach out and then she blames me for not being there for her when I missed one phone call when I was busy scheduling something. Should I have handled this any differently? What should I do? I think it's important to remember that her temper and reactionary nature is literally the reason why she got denied a raise. I mean, the proof is right there in front of you. She clearly has no control over her emotions. And you know what? You just happen to be caught in the crossfire. And while this really is unfair for you altogether, I think it is an important lesson that you know what? You saw exactly how she really is. You've seen her true colors now and you know how she's going to react in stressful situations. Like literally her reaction proves her boss was right. And honestly, considering the fact that you've only been dating her for maybe a little over a month, I seriously think you dodged a nightmare of a relationship. Am I the jerk for not letting my roommate back into our apartment after she smelled really bad after getting spit on by a camel? Here's what happened. So this just happened and it's been super stressful and I'm wondering if I made the right decision. I share an apartment with another woman and we've been decent enough acquaintances. I'm the primary tenant but she's subleasing and the landlord is okay with that. Apparently she walked out to this fair that has all sorts of attractions and animals. It was within walking distance about a mile away from our unit. I remember it being advertised but I didn't go myself. Well, to put it plainly, she got spat on by a camel. She texted me shortly after it happened to warn me and that she was coming home. I thought to myself, okay, what's the big deal? Go ahead and come on home. I saw her coming up the steps looking absolutely miserable. And when I went out to the porch to greet her, I was hit with the most unbelievably vile smell I've ever smelt. And this is from a good 20 feet away. I really couldn't take it. I got only a whiff and I felt my stomach churning. I went back inside and I closed the door. She came up and tried to get inside with her key, but I was practically begging her, no, whatever happened, you cannot come in like that. She was yelling at me, what? I live here. What are you talking about? And then was practically crying that she had nowhere else to go. I said to her, I'm sorry, but there's no way I can't let that smell in my house. I could smell her even through the door. I was seriously gagging. I suggested that she find a hose or a shower somewhere or jump in a small creek or something. Anything but come in like that. But she was saying that no store would let her in. But I held firm. I held the door closed until she walked away. She came back an hour later soaking wet. Maybe she really did jump in the creek. And when the door was opened, the smell was maybe just a little bit better than what it was before. But it was still horrific. She jumped straight into the shower, but I can still faintly smell it throughout the entire living room and it's making me feel absolutely sick. Now we're both furious with each other. I'm angry that she came back in before the smell was gone and now the whole place smells unbearable. She's furious that I dared to hold the door shut and keep her out and she is now saying that she'll be talking to the landlord or a lawyer because that can't be legal. But I don't know what else I could have done. It was so dreadful. So am I the jerk for not letting my apartment mate back inside after she got spit on by a camel? Yeah, I'm gonna have to say you are the jerk in this situation. She literally lives there. She pays rent. That is her place. You can't just lock her out because she smells
smells bad. That is not how that works. Because you know what? When people are dirty and gross, the place they clean themselves is up in their bathroom, which you blocked her from getting into. And your roommate literally has a point. Where else is she seriously going to go? She's literally got no other place she can get clean, aside from maybe jumping in the river, which by the way, you're a horrible person for even suggesting that. And I'm also pretty sure it's illegal to deny entrance to somebody's home in every single state in the United States. Because, you know, she lives there. She has a key to the house. She's paying rent. She has just as much of a claim over that place as you do. So seriously, you're definitely a jerk in this situation. You should not have done that, and you absolutely should have let her come into her own home. My boyfriend and I got into a huge argument, and as a result, my boyfriend said some horrible things about me that have left me wondering what I'm supposed to do with our relationship, and it has seriously hurt my feelings so intensely. And now, as a result, I am seriously considering breaking up with him and possibly moving out, even though we both have a baby together. Here's what happened. So we've been together for almost two years now. We got into an argument last night, and the details of which are not as important as how badly it escalated, though I will share for context if needed. What would have been a fight an average couple has likely had at some point eventually became a screaming match on his part, with our house being trashed, and me being called the worst things a man could ever say to a woman. And they were awful names, and they really made me feel like garbage. I also want to say that I respectfully asked for space when anger started to show, but that only seemed to worsen things. Nothing was broken in the house except for pieces of my mentality. Those words cut hard, and I lay there in complete disbelief that someone who claimed to love me could seemingly hate everything about me so much. Every word that came out of his mouth was said with such hatred and disgust. He even said at one point that he wanted nothing to do with me or our baby, and to get out of his life. He has since apologized and said he did not mean any of those things, but whether he did or not, they absolutely mean something to me. I get that people say hurtful things when they're upset. Anyone can admit that, but I have never been called such horrible things. I'm also realizing that this is a huge red flag to be called such vile things. And why would he do that? Where did it come from except to make me feel low and worthless? I have never cheated nor disrespected our relationship, and I have never been a promiscuous woman. I do have options though. Either I stay here for the sake of our baby and to keep me from getting an eviction because he won't keep the apartment if I go and he won't leave for me to stay. I can also go with family, but they are out of state and with an eviction on my record, it would be very difficult to get on my feet again. I have destroyed my credit during this relationship and the cost of living makes it so difficult to get an apartment by myself as it is. Mentally, I feel very stuck. Part of me is hurt enough to walk out and not care about the consequences financially. But then if my baby has no contact with his father, there is a huge amount of guilt to look forward to, uncertainty to face, a lot of grieving to do, and possible regret. I don't know if a relationship can be repaired after something like this either. I also don't know if it's just gonna get worse from here. I feel like I will always remember this forever, even if I try to stay and work it out. I don't know if the hurt will ever go away, to be honest. If anyone has any good advice, I really wanna hear it, because honestly, I don't know what to do. Yeah, your boyfriend sounds incredibly toxic. And it really is unfair that he would suddenly jump to all these conclusions about you and say all these horrible, vile names just to try and make you hurt. And sure, at least he apologized, right? Well, that apology doesn't take away from the pain that you're feeling. And I really feel like you are completely justified in feeling the way that you do. And obviously, things get really complicated when you do add the baby into the mix. The baby, in my opinion, really should be the deciding factor on what you decide to do. Because that child deserves to have a home that's happy. Because I mean, this guy went as far as to trash your apartment and basically have this massive explosion over an argument. I mean, that is a massive red flag that absolutely cannot be ignored. If he wants to be a good father and a responsible father at that, he needs to either learn how to control his temper or at least learn how to not freak out and start throwing things around. But if you did decide to leave and have an eviction on your record of some kind or something like that, it really wouldn't be the end of the world. If you did decide that this guy is not worth living with, it would be better to have that on your record than to be stuck with someone that you really do not care about. So like you said, you do have options. You also have family out of state who I'm sure that if they knew what was going on, they probably would welcome you back with open arms. So the decision really does fall squarely on your shoulders. It really is up to you on what you want to do. Do you want to stay and work it out and try and find some kind of solution? Or is it time to leave and get things going? Either way, it really is up to you. And whichever world you think this baby should grow up in is honestly the one that you should push for. Because that baby should take priority above anybody else no matter what. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, 
subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.